people are like, oh, but you know, the fashion industry is so cutthroat and so competitive and you work all these crazy hours. But, you know, there's that moment when you send out that collection or that dress or, you know, however you show your things or whatever your pinnacle is, where you're floating. And, you know, if you can have that twice a year or you're once lucky. a year, you're, you're lucky, you know. You're, you're in heaven twice a year. Yeah. William Calvert in reality is a luxury ready-to-wear line. The collection's based off of a dress rather than based off a jacket, so often sometimes it gets lumped into couture rather than sportswear. Early on, I mean, probably as far back as like seven years old, I remember being very aware of appearances and how people um, played with those to give off a certain impression. And I just was always very comfortable in sort of the vocabulary of if your shirt is made out of cotton and it has buttons on the collar, it means X, and if it doesn't, it means Y, and you know, not that it so means this anything. Is, so for you, it was more symbolism, in other words. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's sort of what got me started, and what this says about me, kind of thing, when the person wears it. And then, you know, um, the whole interplay of line and construction and technique. I was at this very um, conservative, almost Reagan youth prep school, and they were like, fashion? What? Certainly my father, who's an engineer, might have said, you know, um, architecture makes a little bit more sense. I don't know a damn thing about fashion, but, you know, if that's what you but want to do. But it's architecture, too. It's yeah, exactly it's the exactly the same thing. Yes. And, and in some ways, I find that it's harder because a building doesn't have to move. You know, once you get all those crazy lines in place, they're fine. investigated a bunch of schools and the one we ended up settling on was called Philadelphia College of Textiles and Science. And because the school I was at in Philadelphia had everything, it was much more industrial in its focus and I really wanted to focus on, you know, la -di da So I went to Italy to really um, perfect sketching and, you know, really couture pattern making skills and draping and things like that. What was the difference between the, the way they looked at things and the way the Americans Well, the looked thing at that makes me a little crazy about Americans is before the sketch is even done, they're talking about what, will it sell or not, and can it be mass produced and all this, you know, you know. And I can appreciate that, but at the same time, the bottom line doesn't become exciting unless you're doing something new and fresh. And in Italy, it was, it was you know, all about doing it right. You know, if it's done right and it's good and it'll it's beautiful, sell. it'll sell. So what happened then? And so I, you know, I went to Paris and really liked it, and wangled my way into Balenciaga. And uh, what I did thought, you? Yeah, what did you like to heaven? You know, I have why? Been, Explain that to me. Because um, here I was, this incredible uh, French house with this incredible history, and you know, I'm this kid from Baltimore. And then you know, uh, the first fashion show, Christy Turlington opened the show, and I got to dress her. And there was all these things that were just huge milestones as far as my career in fashion. What did you learn at Balenciaga? What I learned in Paris was to take all that I had learned in Italy, all the you know precise pattern making and illustration, all that, and just be you know looser with it. We just sketched and handed that to the um, workroom, and you know, in a good workroom, caught the spirit of your sketch or what you meant by your sketch, not just what you had on the paper. To me, a great team is as as that sketch travels down the line. Um, from you know being a blank piece of paper to being a garment, everyone has to add their little bit. And you know someone who can say, oh, I see that it's a three-button jacket, and just whip up some dumb pattern. I, you know you don't want that person. You want them to say, oh, well, it's got a little mm here and a little mm there. A great pattern maker looks at your sketch and gives you not what you drew, but what you meant by your drawing. And I mean, they, they find a way with the shape of the garment they're doing, let's say it's a jacket, that they, they fill it with all the attitude and all the pizzazz that you're trying to get in, with your sketch. When I went to Balmain, I w was working in the licensing studio, but also helped the designer prepare the haute couture. And, you know, once you've seen that, 
you're really not interested in t-shirts anymore. You know, people think, oh, how could a dress or, or a jacket possibly cost $100,000? But when you take, you know, fabric that's been woven on some special loom by the, the most technically advanced or um, knowledgeable person, and, and it's, you know, $1,000 a yard, and then you employ, you know, the five best technicians to create that garment at, you know, um, fifty dollars an hour, a hundred dollars an hour, and they work a hundred hours a piece, you know, suddenly that garment's getting very expensive. Um, but the thing about Haute Couture is it's a laboratory. It's 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 a Formula One racing. It's where all the new ideas and techniques are tested out and proven and figured out so that it's much simpler and less expensive once they're once they're put into ready to wear. There was this one suit that's my favorite thing to talk about as far as the couture where it, um, the designer's inspiration for the collection was Gaudi, the architect. And um, he took these three um, really fine cotton, Swiss cotton piquets and had the sample room cut them up into jagged little bits and they pinned them all over the dress form to create this very form-fitted silhouette. And, but it had a lapel and square shoulders, but you know, it was very sucked in at the waist. Um, but there were no traditional scenes, it was just created by the interaction of all these little pieces. And then hand stitched them back all together after they were all pinned in place, and then beaded like three or four rows of seed pearls around each piece so it looked like raised mortar. You know, and there were no seams. I mean, there were all the little seams of the piece, but there were no, you know, traditional yeah. seams. And when, you know, when I saw that, I just felt my face. I was like, my God! You know? For you, you were the same guy. Uh, right, there you go. Um, but just, you know, the patience and, and the know-how and the focus and, and you know, the just... Yeah, but William, why do people need that? It's the same reason you need a cathedral. It's the same reason you need, um, you know, a skyscraper. It's, it's, it's pushing the... It's, it's seeing... It's doing it for the sake of doing it. It's the same reason there's iambic pentameter in poetry. I mean, it's, it's creating these parameters and then, you know, blowing through them. And I just think that's, you know, that's wonderful. started they had they weren't sure that jacket would work but the whole you know the designer sketched and said this is what I want and then you've got you know 700 years of experience of golden hands trying to put it together and um, you know I, I, I no mean um, in no way mean this to be a, a slap but it, it's almost like being close to God because there's so much intensity and there's you know just when people are that good at what they do and you're around that passion it's, it's, it's as close as you can get to that on Earth without having, you know, divine intervention. After Balmain, I went to Rochas, which was across the street, and Peter O'Brien was a designer when I was there. They make these incredibly intricate, incredibly expensive, um, ready-to-wear clothes. It's like this little jewel box that no one um, takes notice of it. And then I um, got offered a job in America, and I came back, and I worked for Diane von Furstenberg for like a year and a half. I wrote a business plan and, you know, shopped it around and started and... So this is what you're doing now. Yeah. So when did you start this business? 97. What is your signature? I guess what the big thing that I do is the decoration and the construction are the same. Yes. You know, they're integral and... Are you more sculpting your work rather than draping your work? I'd say it's more sculpt because sculpt because I, we spend a lot of time. Even if we want the line to go like this, we try here, we try there, we try there, just to get it to be in that perfect flattering spot. Because I want it to be edgy and new and fresh and all of that. But at the same time, it has to make a woman look beautiful. You know, the, if it's smushing one boob and making the other one poke out, and you know, making one shoulder lower than the other and all of that, what's the point? The funniest thing that sticks in my mind is when I did my first season. I called a bunch of stores, and some of them called me back and some of them didn't. But one had sort of an open vendor day where you could come and, you know, as a new person, get an appointment with a buyer and show them. And I packed up my dress samples and went down to see them, and they give you a little room and you set yourself up. And you're all ready, you know, and you, you, know, you haven't slept the night before because you're so nervous, and you have your little, you know, pictures and swatches and your dresses, and you're ready to go. And this person walks in, looks at my clothes, and goes, this really isn't for us, and walked out. And I thought, whoop, that was painful. And the following week, 
I had a piece in Vogue, and that same person called me up and said, oh, I just read your piece in Vogue, I'd love to come see the line. And I thought, does it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> and so she came up and looked at the line on mannequins and said, oh, these are you know, beautiful, really fresh, really new. How could you possibly have slipped through the cracks? I've been doing business with them ever since.